High Intensity Drug Traffic at Area, acronym HIDA, report reveals some additional vital information. The report is quote, quoted as follows. Many Department of Interior lands can no longer be used safely by the public due to pervasive smuggling. Department of Interior lands are the blue parcels in the slide and include fully half of the entire New Mexico and Arizona border with Mexico. What we will learn is that the USDA Forest Service border lands must also be added to the analysis. The Hyder report divulges some very insightful information from Aerostat surveillance of smuggling activity for Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. In Texas, the relative density of activity equates to about 0 .06 radar contacts per mile of border, and drug apprehensions are even less at 0 .02 incidents per mile of border. In New Mexico, the concentration was nearly twice the Texas average at 0.11 radar contacts per mile of border. The incidence of drug apprehensions was 15 times higher than Texas at 0.3 radar contacts per mile of border in New Mexico. While the New Mexico rate of apprehension elevates concern greatly, the Arizona records are off the chart. There, Aerostat radar sightings run 10 times higher than Texas at 0.6 radar contacts per mile. The apprehensions run 25 times higher than Texas at 0.53 incidents per mile of border. Look closely at this slide. It represents a veritable invasion of the United States from a foreign country. Note also that an obvious abundance of drug apprehensions occur where there are no blue parcels of Department of Interior lands in areas east of the concentrated border lands dominating the western half of Arizona. Those are largely Coronado National Forest lands which were also large parcels of federally controlled land adjacent to or near the border. From a national security standpoint, why is there such a difference between the Arizona results and the results in Texas? Why do drug cartel aircraft sightings in Texas occur once every 50 miles of border while in Arizona they occur once in less than two miles of border. That basic question was posed to three retired Border Patrol officials. Gene Wood, former chief of the McAllen, Texas sector said, you've got private ownership of land with a very aggressive citizenry in Texas protecting their property rights. They interact immediately and continuously with the Border Patrol and the Border Patrol has full and unencumbered access to everything at any time for any reason. Former Chief of Flight Operations for the Border Patrol Richard Hayes responded to the question of why New Mexico has an intermediate result between the extremes of Arizona and Texas. Mr. Hayes said, like Arizona, there is a domination of federal lands along the border, but New Mexico still has a resident ranching community. Go over into Arizona and nearly the entire border is federally controlled land. The ranchers have been eliminated or so decimated that they can no longer maintain a dominant presence. They are gone from the monuments and the wildlife refuges and the infrastructure that they built and maintain is gone as well. The forest allotments are so gutted and reduced that those folks are in a very precarious position. And in the Tahona O'Don Reservation, the BIA has no idea how to control that deal. You come to your own conclusions of what happened in Arizona. Former Yuma Sector Chief and current Chair of the National Association of Retired Border Patrol Officers, Jim Schweitzer, also responded. He said, New Mexico and Texas still have a vested, engaged, and resident population of citizens who will protect their private property rights. Their Arizona counterparts have been largely eliminated. Look at the data. Where there are resident Americans who have property rights at risk, there remains a working relationship with the Border Patrol. If there is activity, the Border Patrol will be contacted and welcomed. That is not the case where federal agencies are present. The difference in the frequency of radar contacts and apprehensions across Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona is shocking and should immediately create a strong desire to understand what is happening in Texas that isn't happening in Arizona. Mr. Wood said something that provides perhaps the most profound bit of insight yet divulged. He said, in Texas, there is a united front that is committed to protecting the border and eliminating drug running. Interestingly, there is also strong influence adjacent to the border. 
Where there is long-standing American ownership, there is normally a strong Mexican counterpart. Could Mr. Wood's comments apply not to just social and economic, but extend to biological and ecosystem systems as well? A review of the Park Service study at Oregon Pipe provides a glaring example. In setting forth the factors contributing to the assault on the monument's resources, the staff listed activity adjacent to the border as the first cause. Given the devastating impacts resulting from the environmental laws implemented by the American government, it raises curiosity about the impacts reflected in Mexico. The study shows a mirror image pattern of growth and in infrastructure in Mexico in and adjacent to supposed protected areas such as wildlife refuges and monuments. The El Finacate Biosphere Reserve shows an evidence of landing strips, colonias, bus stops, illegal roads, and a full array of service industries that have cropped up to support and profit the massive illegal migration northward. This information is of great concern on many fronts and it represents a serious threat to our national security. It is very interesting to learn that on July 10, 2009, a letter from the DOI to the Honorable Rob Bishop, ranking member of the House Subcommittee on National Parks, Forests, and Public Lands, revealed that the DOI and U.S. Park Service never reported the information in their study to Congress. This information was not provided to the Congressional Subcommittee, and the appropriate questions citizens should ask why? The facts about what has happened on the Arizona border are being hidden from the American people. There are serious homeland security issues, and yet Senator Bingaman and Representative Grijalva either have or are in the process of introducing legislation for yet more border wilderness. The facts about Arizona border wilderness are not being dealt with honestly and objectively. But the illegal border activity is only one of numerous issues related to wilderness designation on federal land that suffer from the same absence of objectivity. Shouldn't national security and halting human and drug smuggling trump environmental idealism? What is more important to the average American?